Hello everybody, this is the second video on VVA and macros. As the first video was general introduction on coding, its significance and the rules to execute your code. If you haven't watched the first tutorial, I have given the link above. Now in this tutorial, we will learn about VVA and macros interface, how to record your macros, how to run it and how to edit it later on Visual Basic Editor Windows. We will be going step by step from basic level to advanced macros editing. So it is always better you watch complete video playlist from beginning to the end. Also, if you want to learn such contents, you are always welcome to like and subscribe our channel. And now without any further delay, let's jump right into the tutorial. In this sheet, we have top 10 movies from 2017 to 2020 in the basis of box office collections. We will be working in this particular data to know about the basic concept of Excel, VVA and macros. There are two ways to get into the Visual Basic Editor. The most easiest and the most preferred method is by pressing Alt and F11 in your keyboard. When you press Alt and F11, then a new window pops up. This is the Visual Basic Editor. Let's close the window for now. The second method to enter into the Visual Basic Editor is from Developer option. If you don't have developer option enabled, don't worry, even I don't have that. We can right click on any of these tabs here and in the customize ribbon option. In the right hand side of this corner, we can see a developer option. We need to check this option. Now we have our developer option. When we go to the developer option in the left corner, we have Visual Basic. When you click this, then the same window appears. Now this Visual Basic editor is divided into three parts. First is the project window. Second is the properties window and third is the coding section. In this project option, we are going to have all our codes that we have written manually or by recording a macro. Now this is the properties window where we can change the properties of the Visual Basic Editor. Now the last section over here is the coding section. We are going to enter all the codes and run it from here. Now we have this section blank because we do not have any executable code right now. So when we record a macro, we can see our code generated over in this section. So let's close this for now. Now to record a macro, again there are three different ways. First is, again we have to go to this developer option and we have record macro option here. The second way is to go to the view tab over here and in the macros option here, we have record macro. The third and the most preferred way of recording the macro is by having a record button over here. We can right click this button and in here we can see macro recording button unchecked. We need to check this, then we can see a new button pops up here. When we click this, then again the same window pops up. The first option of this window is macro name. We can have any macro name as per our wish. But the thing that we should remember is we can never start our macro name from a number and we cannot have any spaces in between our macro names. If we insert color all, then this is our correct name for the macro. But if we insert color space all, this is the wrong format. It is not going to take this kind of names. Also, we do not want the starting letter of our macro name to be a number. Now in this shortcut key, we can assign any shortcut key as per our wish. If we enter O, then we can see our shortcut key for this macro becomes Control and O. We can even hit Shift and O. Now in this way, our shortcut key becomes Control, Shift and O. Actually, there are many predefined control keys in the Excel, such as if we hit Control F, then it is going to find something. If we hit Control B, then it is going to bold the letter or alphabets. So we should enter a unique name for the shortcut key. Let's leave the shortcut key blank for now. Now in this store macro in option, we can have three options. We can either store this macro in personal macro workbook. That means we can have password protected macro book. Uh, we can even uh, copy this macro into a new workbook. And we even have the option to keep the macro in the current workbook. That is this workbook. Now in this description option, we can always type some details so that we can remember what our macro was in the future. Now let's close this for now. Now let us record our first macro. You can see in all of these sheets, I have just a table, but I do not have any heading of the table. So we want to record a macro code. So in the future, it can automatically generate us the title of this table. To do so, first we have to go to this record macro option. Uh, we can type table macro. We do not want any space over here. Let's leave this shortcut key blank for now. Uh, we want this macro to be stored in this workbook. And in the description, we can write this macro generates table headings as soon as we hit ok then automatically the macros start recording all our activities in the excel sheet so if we hit ok 
then we can see our record button appears over here now all of the things that we will be doing in this sheet uh, is been recorded in the background by the macros now to insert the heading we can go to insert option here then in this cell over here we can write rank this is movie this is the language this is the name of the distributor director this is IMDb rating this is Rotten Tomatoes score and this is box office collection in billions so now we can even increase its size we can change some formatting we can make this center we can even change the field color let's say this color we can even change the color of the text uh, into let's say yellow we can even hit alt and enter over here to make this more visible now let's again increase its size so in this way we can see we have entered a heading for the table now we can close the recording now the macros has successfully recorded all our action that we have performed in this sheet now we can delete this section over here you can see that I have made a mistake in entering the spelling of language here. I have entered language. That was intentionally. I will be discussing about it later. Now I can delete the section. Now I have my recorded macros stored in this Excel sheet. To assess the macro, I can go to the developer option. And in the macros option, I have this table macro option that I had just recorded. So again, there are many methods to run a macro we can go to the developer option and in the developer we can go to the macros option as we have done here also we can go to the view option and in the view we have macros and we have here view macros also another option is we can go to the visual basic editor that is alt and f11 and here in the project option we can see modules being added when we click the plus sign then the module one is the macros that we have generated when you double click this we can see all the codes that we have recorded this is the rank, this is movie, this is language, this is distributor and so on. Now if we have done any mistake in recording, then we can correct it in the visual basic editor. Let's say this is language, not language. We can even run a macro from here. We have run option here and in the run option, we can run this sub user form. We have a direct run option over here also, run sub user form or we can hit F5 directly. Let's close this for now. There is also another way of creating a button so that we can press the button and the macro will run automatically. To do so, we again go to the developer option and in the developer option, we have insert option and in the form control option, when we click this button, then we can have this plus sign and let's say in this space over here, we want a button and automatically the button asks us to assign a macros. So we can assign this table macro to the button. Now we have a button one. So when we hit this button, click once we click the button then we can see our table is automatically generated over here we can even copy this button and we can take it to different sheets let's say in this sheet uh, we can paste it over here paste we can paste it over here also here also now when we press this button again then we can see the table is automatically generated now again when we press this button here then the table heading is generated again we can do the same thing over here if we double click this button then we can see two different headings are generated by mistake we may double click but there is no going back as i have mentioned in the rule number one in the previous video there is no control z if we try to hit control z then an error sound pops up so we must be very careful while running our macros because there is no going back we should manually delete this option now the last thing that we will be learning in this tutorial is to save our macros enable file when we try to save our file let's say file and save then automatically an error message pops up that it is a macro enable file it cannot be saved in macro free workbooks so it says the following features cannot be saved in macro free workbooks pb project to save a file with this feature click no and then choose a macro enable file type in the file type list to continue saving as a macro free workbook click yes if we want to eliminate all those macros code that we have generated till now then we can press s then it will be macro free workbook but if we want to save a macro enable file separately then we have to press no and in the no option we can select any of this data over here let's say desktop so we can save it in any location let's say new folder now in this section we have to save it as macro enabled workbook excel macro enabled workbook save 
Now when we go to our save location, then we have two different files here. One is movies in North Cell, that is general Excel file that is in the format of Excel SX. Now this macro enable file will be in the format of Excel SEM. The EM stands for macros. So in this way, we can save our macros so that we can assess the macros enable file in the future. So this was the basic tutorial on Excel BBA macros interface. We learned how to record a macro, how to run a macro and how to save our macros file. We even learned how to edit the macros in macros visual basic editor. This tutorial was a beginner's guide to Excel BBA and macros. In the next tutorial, we'll start macros programming. We will learn about several commands and formatting methods in visual basic editor. So see you in the next video.